Right, so we're going to do this um, chain and sprocket. So what you'll need for this is an 8mm T-bar, 10mm uh, T-bar, and you'll just need a pair of pliers. So I'll start up here. And do this pocket cover. If you've got power tool, guys, obviously you can use your power tools. I'm just doing it this way so that if you need to pause or rewind, you've got plenty of time to do it, because if I do it with power tools, things are moving so fast. Um, yeah, you struggle to keep up. So we do it this way nice and slow. Take the gear lever off as well. Um, just to make it a bit easier. So what I do is I just chop the back wheel up. Bang. And undo the nuts. We'll be using the reusing the nuts and we'll be reusing the circlip in here as well. So keep them on standby. Now that seal's about to pop out, so we've actually noticed something extremely serious. So I'm actually going to replace that seal. Just use your little hook to pull it out. Or you can use a screwdriver. Obviously that's half hanging out, so it's not going to be too hard to pull out. I like to just give them a little bit of a wipe before I put a new seal in there. You know, just clean it up a little. Use a little bit of grease there, just so the shaft will just pop over that nice and neat. Got a new seal there now. Yeah. Just checking the gear shaft seal as well. You know, we're in there, we might as well look at it. Alright, would you get that sprocket on now? Use that same circlip as before. So this is a 15 standard dairy. I'm just going to give that a bit of a spray. Because sometimes they can be tight, obviously with the rust on it. That's much easier now much easier. If it gets a little bit stiff, you just need a bit of a lube up. And she pretty much gives in straight away once it's penetrated with that uh, WD-40. What I generally do here is I'll do these finger tight. But what I'll do on the last one is I'll just put it in just a little bit. 
I'll just start it and I'll leave it hanging out. I do that purposely so that reminds me to tighten it up once I've got the new chain in it. Each to their own. We'll bring this around um, for the circlet which is just here. And then we can feed the new chain on. We're using a DID chain, they are again the OEM maker, so when you bought the CT110 brand new, this is what came with the bike. So always closed end of the direction of travel. That's to say that uh, if there are any sticks get in here, it won't open up the closed end because it's facing on the opposite end of travel. So closed end on the drive in on, tra on travel. Now I'll tighten up that screw that I said I would get to before. Tighten them both up. Tight, that's tight. So now we'll put some nuts on that. So there's adjusters on each side if you have a look here. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Just even them up on each side. Right, okay, we're getting pretty much spot on where we need to be. We're about three and a half each side. So what I'll do is I'll leave it there for the time being, and then once I get it down on the ground and I jump on it, I'll test my weight and get it spot on. So we'll get the cover, we'll get the cover back on. We'll get that gear lever on as well. I'm happy with the seal. We'll just get that on. That gear lever is pretty bent. I'll straighten it when it's on the bike. Tight. I'll straighten that. Just grab a shifter. On. So that's done, that's done, and we'll adjust, we'll do the final adjustment on that chain when I drop it on the ground. Okay anyway guys, we're going to finish off the adjustment of the drive chain, so again it's still 22 to 17 and a 10 mil T-bar. So what I notice is... Here we go. <laughs> 
very tight, but it's very tight. It's too tight. See, you can't even move it. So what we'll do is we'll just um, adjust that a little bit. 22 and 17. We'll just crack that. And like I said, we've got slots on either side, but generally what I'll do in this case is I'll just go half a turn on that side, half a turn on the other. If you pull the chain, it'll move it forward, but just double check it anyway. Yep, and that's even. Hold the chain tight. Actually, I might just do that a little bit more. That was a half. I'll just go another quarter because what happens as you're tightening the chain under the frame you're actually pulling the wheel backwards because that's grabbing I hold the chain tight now we've got a bit of slack there I did, I probably, did, probably didn't need to do. But that's good. You can see me going through what you guys would probably go through. We'll just bring that back. We'll just crack that. And we'll just that quarter that I took. We'll just take that back up again. So maybe just half. Half should be fine well, from where I was, obviously. You should always tighten the chain on the tight, tightest spot too, by the way, so I am cheating a bit here. And that's much better, that's spot on. That's about how much you need. Because you're gonna be loaded, you're gonna be going over bumps, you're gonna be traveling. And that's that. After you've done that, just make sure that's definitely tight. And just nick things up by holding the chain. Just a nick, because otherwise those nuts will run away on you. And you don't want your nuts to run away on you. Done. <laughs>